Good afternoon, how are we all doing? Welcome back once again to Celtic World Order podcast. As always, I'm Steve O'Mahon and I'm joined here. It's became something of my right hand man. It's uh, Paddy Boy, Paddy Maguire. And we're here to discuss what was an eventful weekend, wasn't it, my friend? How are you? you? Is the happiness factor an overload? Of course it is, yeah, all good here. Um, good result for us. And then, obviously, like you said, the weekend took a a wee turn for the the favour, shall we say? Um, aye, feeling it. All That's good. That. Well, the 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 opposite side used to say I'm feeling it, but I think it's us that are certainly feeling something. There's something in the air, isn't there? Uh, a bit of nerves, shall we say? That hopefully we'll crack on and we'll take care of that. But as the title says, and we'll get round to it, a shock Highland fling, a party in the Highlands puts us firmly in the driving seat and it does indeed pile pressure on your rivals who, as we know, well, they don't like it, do they, Paddy? No, they certainly don't. Um, we've touched on it previously. We've got a squad full of winners, full of guys that have done this. Brendan touched on it as well. He said when it comes to this time of the season, that's when we kick on. We that's kick cool. on because we've done it before. We're winners. What have they got? A group of serial losers and that's it. And it showed, it showed at the weekend. It really did. And uh, these guys, they're Hall of Famers, were all found out, and now they're getting flung under the bus. And it's beautiful. It's, it's glorious. <laughs> Mate, that's what I love. I love it. I love it. Do you know what? Listen, we know there's still many games to go. There's possible twists and turns because there's been hell. There's been enough of them this season so far. Yeah. But do you know what? That's football fandom, isn't it? We are we should be. We should be entitled to have a laugh, a wee joke, or a jibe at the opposition. Because listen, that's what makes football rivalries get around, doesn't it? Hopefully, touch wood, it doesn't come back and bite us in the backside further down the line. But let's enjoy that moment because, as we well know, when we, it was us that were tripping up, well, elsewhere, they're doing exactly what you're doing and yeah. they're having a laugh, isn't it? I mean, my, it, my, it's, phone, my phone was constant when they were um, on the run. And, um, yeah, I, I've took a wee, a wee few moments out to send some messages over the weekend just to remind them that second place in Glasgow is first loser. Exactly. Well, as we say, we'll get round to that and we'll get round to what the ramifications of that game might actually result in. But first and foremost, it is the breakdown, so we've got a game to look at. But before we do that, let's get the wee bit of housekeeping out of the way. You'll be fed up with me saying this now, but it has to be done. As I say all the time, right now, CWO's operation is small but there's always room for some rapid expansion. So if you want to support the channel, if you want to help us extend the reach, then you know what you need to do. It takes two seconds. When you're watching here on YouTube or elsewhere, make sure you hit that subscribe. Support the channel. If you like the video, get a wee thumbs up. If you want to go a wee bit further, go a bit crazy, you can share the content, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on X and that will just help get more like-minded fans in here, get more eyes on the podcast, and allow us to reach more fans like yourselves. If you want to follow us on X, formerly Twitter, for those who are old school, it's at CWOPod1888. You'll also find me and Paddy's personal handles in there. If you want to listen to our nonsense that's not within the sphere of the CWO podcast, and of course, if you are mega old school and you still like a bit of Facebook action, then it's at Celtic World Order Podcast. That's it. That's the housekeeping done. Let's get down to business. And, well, we did get down to business, didn't we, Paddy? 3-0 at home. We got there in the end. Yeah. Um, first half, I think the weather had quite a, a part to play in it. Um, looked horrible out there. You know, the guys try to keep the ball on the deck. Every time you, you try to raise the ball off the deck, it seemed to go in other directions. Uh, I think, obviously, second half, the weather was still horrible, but it seemed to be playing our favour a wee bit. And um, we come out with a bit between the teeth and got the job done. Aye. I think it was yourself that said, and I, I, I think it was you. I get the message during the game, and it was like, it looks like that end bit of the crystal maze with all that stuff that was going around the park. It, really did. it was crazy, <laughs> wasn't it? It was everywhere. I know. Uh, 
<laughs> and players, at one point, I think Hatati was running for the ball and the bit of wrapped around his ankle and he's just just carried on running. Mate. He's just like, I know, it's just uh, the way that the way there was bail, but we got there, and as we say, it's, it's an old cliche as well. It really was a game of two halves, wasn't it? You know, we looked at the game, we profiled it on the pre-match and we says we looked at the opposition, we looked at some we knew what we were going to get, you know, Robinson, whether you like him or hate him, he drills his teams, they're organised and they know what to do, they're big, they're physical. And they certainly, you know, they weren't without causing their issues, were they? No, they've done their job. I mean, these guys, like you say, they come out, they come at you. Um, they've done, yeah, what you expected. I think the one thing we didn't expect was obviously Yang to start on the left. Oh, yes, um, we'll get around to team selection, eh? <laughs> I don't know, don't know where that came from. Um, and I think, yeah, pretty much everything else kind of went as we predicted. Yeah, Other than that, I'd say I'd say died up front, obviously. Um, well, he did come on and we'll get around to him as well, eh? Making an yeah. impact, making a name for himself. I, you know, if we bring it back to kick-off time or just mm -hmm. even before, when the team gets announced, you know, you and I sat here and we says there's going to be the force changes. We expected, we got the midfield that we thought, you know, McGregor yeah. still not 100%, so it was back to the status quo for games previous. Norotsky comes in uh, at centre-back. There was the toss-up, was it going to be him? Was it going to be Welsh? We got him unfortunately drops out further down in the game as we'll get to but the surprise package wasn't it i mean it surely it had to be was we were hoping to see palmer coming back in out on the left but as you say it, it was yang and what do you think you think there was we uh brendan do you think that was we're at home it's a safe space the guy the nightmare at ibrox let's get his uh, hopes back up or do you think it was maybe palmer just wasn't quite ready I think it's come down to a fitness thing. Obviously, we'd been told that Palmer was uh, back in training and stuff, but they never really give you, oh, he's, a, he's back to 100% fit, he's back to 80% fit. It could, could have been a fitness thing. Um, we know Yang's been fit like that. He played against them and um, didn't have the best game against them either, but the guys come in, it looked kind of flat-footed. It looked as if he was, I mean, yeah, he was, he was in the wrong position, essentially, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right footed trying to play there didn't quite work. No, it, it, it was a strange one, as I say. It was maybe just a trying to bit of man management, perhaps maybe trying to you know get his spirits back up after let's face it, he was kind of culpable as we having him and a wee bit of McGregor in there for two goals at Ibrox. And you know, a young player and experienced a red hot atmosphere, he maybe wilted a wee bit, and there was the idea let's get his confidence back up. Did it work well? Let's look at the first half. Yang, we'll start off with him because that's where we're at. As you say, he's a wee bit flat-footed, a wee bit out of ideas. For me, anyway, I thought he started off and I thought, whoop, maybe he's into it. He looked a wee bit bright. He was trying to take on the man. He was, you know, a couple yeah. of wayward crosses and stuff. But for me, I actually felt that after he took a couple of hits, as we expected from a, you know, a kind of big and physical St Mirren team, it was almost as if he was scared off, was it not? Yeah, he backed off. Like you'd say, he'd went in a couple of times, he'd beat the man and got the ball across and whatever else. But as soon as a couple of tackles started kind of hitting him and the boys were getting closer to him, yeah, he backed off. He, he didn't go by the guys again. Um, I, th I don't know, was it the first half he had that chance as well? Yeah. Um, me or you would have scored it. He, he's took a, a fresh air shot, hasn't he? He's just kind of he swiped at it. I don't know if he's... He's obviously expected it because he swung his boot at it, but it just seemed to be a fresh air dig. Oh, and yeah. uh, aye, that, that, that was kind of frustrating, especially because we were limited for chances in that first half as well. Yeah, we really were. We were really, really limited. And I thought as well, see all we spoke about when we had Rangers and um, we played against them and we saw that speed, we saw that intensity, we see that purpose. It almost felt as if it was a completely different side, certainly by my eye, you know, all that sharpness, the quickness, the turn of play, it was all rather laboured. I thought it felt like some of the guys were phoning it in. Is that just, you know, legs tired out for giving it all at Ibrox? Or is it, you know, is it just indicative of what we've seen most of the season, but it's just not quite clicked for some reason? Well, I've spoke to you about this previously as well, and we've said about uh, our games this season. We seem to be playing one half every time we're playing. Yeah. Um, and that happened again. I mean, we went out there first half and we were, I wouldn't say non-existent, but we weren't ourselves. 
and then we come out the second half and we absolutely batter them. Um, some games against other opposition, we've seen you've seen that there. We've battered them the first half, and then second half they seem to take their foot off the pressure. If we yeah. can get this, what we are doing, and say the second half of this game, if we can do that for the full game, the full ninety minutes, I know fatigue comes into it and things like that, but that's why we've got five subs, or in our yeah. case, six. <laughs> well, well, and we'll get around that, and that's a good point as well because it was obviously a concussion substitution. But we said we'll cover that because that will buy into this added on time thing that I want to touch on at some yeah. stage. But yeah, you know, listen, we let's be honest in terms of reviewing and breaking down as this show would be. If truth be told, you know, the first half, there's not really much to discuss, is there? There's not much to write no. home about. It was um, very much by the numbers, as you'd say, going through the motions. Yeah. We looked at the opposition, we looked at guys that we thought were going to cause trouble, and certainly I thought the boy, Olasanya, he was putting himself about a bit. And surprisingly, yeah. even though there was not many attempts at goal, I felt on the early stages, the first 25 minutes, it was actually St Mirren that were causing more problems. All right, they're not working hard. A couple of flash balls across the box that you know another time in our place, somebody's on the end off. Mm -hmm. And as I say, all Sanya in particular, making an OCC himself, particularly doing that left. You know, it was Narotsky this time, but him and Taylor was giving him a hard time. And did you at any point sort of think, Oh, here we go, there's they're going to sneak one? Nah, you know me, forever the optimist. <laughs> I was watching it, the guy's got a bit of pace about him as well, and like you say, he's a bit of a unit. Um, but we seem to kind of handle him. Relatively easy enough. Big Narotsky, I think, had quite a decent game. Um, done the simple stuff, seemed to be relatively calm. Um, yeah. And Taylor didn't play. Um, he didn't really do too much, did he? It was, it was very much the Taylor that we've kind of been Jack on Hyde, we became a wee bit acquainted to, as opposed to. Perfect. Not As opposed to when we'll get around to the other side, he's opposite number and Johnson, who yeah. in the whole uh, spectrum of the game was a standout and a, and a man of the match. But, uh, you know, as much as it's got pulling teeth with that first half, I think, you know, let's have a wee tiny look at some of the things that really we should have been taking advantage of and now we weren't taking advantage of. We spoke uh, at the weekend about us having this width and you know, that was important to our play. We touched on how Kyogo wasn't really involved in the game at Ibrox, wasn't mm -hmm. coming for those runs. It, it was almost as if it was a dream, wasn't it? Because the exact same thing was happening again. You had Kuhn out there on the right-hand side. Again, a guy off the back of a lacklustre performance at Ibrox. And you'd be thinking, listen, perfect opportunity. Yeah. Neither of the wingers were getting anything. And Kyogo, again... Was just in the periphery of the game, was he not? He was. He seemed to back off. Um, he was getting in the box, but he was he was just standing there. He was with the defenders, but he wasn't being his usual cutting back towards the eighteen yard line or kind of busting in to get to crosses that are getting put in the six yard box. Like a, we we like yeah. a ball straight across the six yard line, drilled quite hard. Mm -hmm. um, Kyogo wasn't getting in their position, so the boys aren't putting the ball in. You see Kuhn got by at one point, and he's looked across, and Kyogo's standing kind of penalty spot with yeah. two or three defenders round about him. There's no point to even put the ball in, so Kuhn cuts back and then gives it back to Johnston, and it's back into Hatati, and then it's kind of... So, I mean, before you know it, you're, you're back out, and then you're trying to go down the left-hand side, and aye, it just seemed to be... Oh, it started to get back to that, as we say, as we've seen through some of the games this season, where it was plan is no working, Normally it would be do plan A better, but it was like plan A's not working. <laughs> what do we do now? And I felt that way, and oh, that's that comes across with the non-existent chances. You know, we finished that halfway, no shots on target again at half time. Yeah. But if we look at what you know, what, what sort of chances was there? Well, there was next to nothing. We had one deflected shot around about 18 20 minutes, but it was cut back into Hatati and he powers one in, it's deflected away, and then as you say, it's Kyogo not quite on his toes, not getting involved in the play, and he's sleeping around about the half hour mark. There's one that gets flashed in. A sharper on at Kyogo makes that run and he flicks it, as we've seen time and time, Aye. past the goalkeeper. He just fresh airs it and slides out the park. I know. So, I'm you know, just... but there was also issues with our game, as I say, is not to labour it too much. When we talk about taking advantage their defenders, they had a, one of their, their, you know, Yang in particular, needs to be held to account for this. 
they're right back, he gets a booking about half an hour, Mark. He's on a yellow, and then shortly thereafter, you've got big Gogic. So you've got your two, two of your centre players on the right-hand side. They're on a yellow card. That's when we should be driving it, guys. That's when we would be asking the questions, getting in the wrong side of them. You know, essentially looking for the foul. I'm not saying looking for it silver style and hitting the ground, but looking for the foul, trying to put them in awkward positions where they're torn between... Did I make this challenge or did I just let it go? I, you know, it's schoolboy stuff, isn't it? You've got to take advantage of any weakness that's presented to you. Of course, you have two guys, like you said, similar positions, both defenders on the yellow, especially somebody like Gogic. We all know he's a bit of a hothead. Um, and you could pick one of the guys out in each of the Premier League teams this season. Um, and if you've got one of them on a yellow card, they're the kind of ones that you want to wind up. You want to get on his toes. You want to be pressing yeah. constant because he was a red card waiting to happen. Um, I think not long after he had a week and a nick at, uh, I don't know if it was a tatty, I think he had a wee nick at, mm-hmm. and uh, he just thought, right, another one of them, and he's he's going to make a ref, he's going to have to make a decision on it. What, but, and what did you think, actually, the referee's performance? You know, referee's performances have come into um, a lot of sort of focus, and certainly I don't want to revisit it, but there was some interesting stuff that was coming out with some of the social media accounts, you know, there's people like, like him or hate him or lint and he puts out a lot of stuff and highlighting referee and sort of issues and how should we say um deficiencies how they've got for example it was 20 minutes in that old firm game or sorry glasgow derby match and i read myself proper there um before celtic were awarded a free kick and i thought there was very much echoes of that again you know that all right there was the two yellow cards but there was lots of wee niggling trips and you know fouls from the St Martin team that I thought were just left to pass. Is that just par for the course when Celtic are playing now? Do you know, I'm all one for letting the game play and letting it carry on if there's an advantage played there. Some of them there wasn't an advantage to us. There was some of them that there was a, a nick in there and you'd seen them just playing on. Whether it comes down to them, like you say, uh, having a wee bit against us or <laughs> something like that, or whether it's just incompetence. Um yeah. I don't know, mate. But listen, I want the game to play. We all want to carry on. Big hands used to love it. Do you know what I mean? They'd say, right, listen, just keep going. Yeah. Keep carrying on. If they take you down as long as we've got the ball, carry on, keep going for it. But uh yeah, it's getting a bit a bit much this twenty minutes into games before you're getting a foul and stuff. Um yeah. especially we're always going to get them. We're quick wingers and quick midfielders when we're doing our one touch football, we're always going to get bad tackles well, that's, the, that's the things we say as we cruise towards a half time I certainly sensed in the crowd there was a wee bit of unrest I mean we're, listen we're not like elsewhere we're not turning on teams and there's not booing but you know you could feel the slack passes and you could hear the, the low grumblings around the stadium couldn't you it started to sort of get a wee bit you know, almost deja vu. And for me, I wasn't I wasn't overly worried, as I say, I wasn't overly worried. I've seen it's come out and do a good second half and turn things around, but it has to be noted. St. Man were doing exactly as we expected. They were causing some issues. They had a good couple of dangerous breaks, actually, and some flash balls across the box that nobody was there, thankfully, for. But they did, they did enough to frustrate us and send it to half time a lot to think about. And as we look on to the second half, First thing, were you surprised that there was no changes at half time? I thought Palmer at least would have been straight out there. Um I thought he'd give Yang a half and then if Palmer's like I said been maybe eighty percent fitted to bring up bring him in. But yeah, he comes in no changes whatsoever. Team yeah. straight back out. I thought, right, okay, this is a bit Aye, well, I, I think, you know, we certainly took us, it only took us maybe about the first five minutes or something to really sort of find our feet. We certainly came out and I thought that we started to look, whatever Brendan said at half time, it certainly had some sort of effect because they were coming out and they were looking a wee bit more sort of like ourselves. There was a wee bit more purpose in the past. And one guy that I mentioned this and I want to touch on it was Kyogo was starting to find. He was, he was coming looking for the ball. Now he's starting to move, aye. Starting to make those moves and join up the play. And obviously, you know, the first chance falls. And the first proper chance is, it again, easy to say here as an armchair footballer, is it a sitter? Is it a bad one? Because the ball gets fired into him. He's got a clear header. He's centre of the box and he knocks it by. Is that just a lack of sharpness there? Not anticipating it, or are you putting it straight down to it's a sitter? Should be one now up. We've come to expect a wee man to put them away, haven't we? Um, 
and for somebody like him, he'd probably call it a sitter. Uh, he, himself, he'd probably expect to be scoring that. But, yeah, I think he's got to be at least putting it in target. Yeah, no. It seems like a bit of a spawn chance. It seems a bit wasted. But one thing, as I say, is with regards to um, Rio, sorry, not Rio, um, Kyogo, and the one thing that I actually liked about him, you know, I had an interesting chat with one of my friends the other day about this, and I quite liked his analogy, so I'm going to use that myself. Remember, we were talking about it, and I say, with Kyogo, particularly against Rangers when he wasn't coming looking for the play, he was just sort of sitting around waiting. When he's been at his best this season is when he's been getting involved in the play. Now, I'm not saying he needs to jump back and fall relatively, really deep, but see even just sort of, you know, five or ten yards out for the edge of the box, coming, looking for the ball, taking the ball, passing it out, and he becomes involved in the move. I think that's where we're getting more purchase out of Kyogo. When he's helping build the play, they know, right, he's gave me the ball, he's passed it to me, he's making the move, and I know I've got to put it in him. I think our problems come when he's waiting about and hoping somebody needs to see his passes. So the, the, the way my mate compared it, and listen, before anybody jumps on it, in no way is he or am I saying that he is anywhere near the level of Erling Haaland. But what he said is, he says, Kyogo, when he was playing under Ange, he had better quality wingers. He had Jota and he had Abada firing on all cylinders, and he could afford to just stand about because those guys were going to find him. The intelligence level was there. He says, if you look at Haaland, when he was playing at Leipzig, when he was playing at Dortmund, albeit fantastic players around him, mm -hmm. they weren't quite that level that he now finds himself having the assistance of at Man City. So he was having to come deeper. He was having to join up the play, be involved, let them see where his runs are going to find him. Whereas at City, like Celtic, when you know, Kyogo, the luxury, the better wingers, he can just sit about because better quality will always find you and they'll have a better game intelligence. And I thought that's very true. Um, you know, we all talk about drop-off and quality of, you know, losing a job or losing a bad and what we've got now. And maybe our players around us need to also cut the cloth of their game and try to work to other people's weaknesses to bring their game up and get more involved. And it happened, didn't it? It happened yeah. eventually for him. That's it. The wee man kind of hung, hung about, same bat, middle of the box. And uh, AJ's found him with an absolute peachy across. Uh, well, we want to get on AJ because he was he was a standout. Was and eventually the goal comes and it's a tatty. And, oh, mate, what a finish, eh? And it starts <laughs> off with Johnson, she says. He was one of the few guys in the early Part of that first half, he was showing real promise and showing that purpose and determination that we were lacking in the first half. You know, he gets the ball, he's strong, he wins it, he holds off two, and he cuts the ball in just a nice wee slide pass into Rio and mate, pff, pick it out outside of the foot. Yeah, absolute screamer. Again, we've come to kind of expect if a wee man gets it that part of the box, anywhere between the 18 yard line outwards, he's. Uh, He's, he's hitting the target at least, and yeah, outside of the boot, top corner. Two keepers aren't saving that. No, I mean, it, it's, it's what a finish. And, you know, in the short period that we've had him back, if you just felt that it's maybe the, the secret ingredient to that midfield to make us tick, it's mm -hmm. which Inky Geezers, you know, without we could wax lyrical all day about him, but what is it about Hitati, do you think, that, that adds to this midfield that brings on the team? We, we spoke about it before. We, you say you miss him, you miss him. And if you'd asked us back then when you've not seen him in the team, you're going, oh, we miss a tatty, we miss a tatty. You see him coming in. First game back was at the Levy game. Mm -hmm. And everything just seemed to go faster through the middle of the park. It comes into him. His head's up straight away. He's like a wee weasel. He's just straight up, the head's going. He's, and then the ball's away. And he picks a pass. He's, he's got the, the vision and he's got the speed. And the boy can finish. Aye. Just for me, he's he's the piece that is a staunch in that team. He's just the he's perfect. Do you know what I mean? He's just the. Aye. the I think as well. What, what's what's fantastic is we talk about getting quality players back, and that's only going to help us. And it does pick up our pace. It does pick up our speed, and it makes everything so much slicker, faster, and better on the eye, and ups the quality. <laughs> but also, we you know again, I bring it back because I love talking about it. We talk about the mentality, and we want guys that are got that mental strength. What did you think his comments 
um, quite recently when he was coming back. But I'll just paraphrase where he says words to the extent of, I want to beat Celtic, I want to continue winning trophies, and I want Celtic fans to be saying, we need Rio Hattati in this team. Does that speak to you as a player that's for the running, for these championship rounds? That's the kind of guy you want in there, isn't it? Of course it is. A leader, a winner. Do you know what I mean? The wee man knows what it means. He knows as soon as he walks out onto that park, you can hear the Celtic fans. Do you know what I mean? He's got a lovely wee song about him. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were absolutely belting it. And uh, it's, it's awesome. And he loves that. You can see it as well. Do you know what I mean? His first game for us, he, he, he found out exactly what it meant. And uh, you can see in his face that he's right. he's got it. He's certainly a cult hero and he's you know, he, he he brings so much to the squad. And you know what? I don't want to sort of dampen the mood, but see if his attitude is because he's been injured and he's still got one eye elsewhere. See as long as he's doing it with full commitment when he's in his the green white hoops, you know, what'll be will be if that time ever comes. But right now we've got to we've got to enjoy guys like him, haven't we? Because out of the squad that we've got, he's certainly one that could attract um some suitors from elsewhere, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Somebody comes in for him, we'll just pick somebody else for the squad and tell them that's real hot eye and send them away. Um, <laughs> I don't know, he, he man's brilliant. For me, he's he's just the catalyst. He's he's the boy who you put in there. Him and CCV and just build the team around them. For me, yeah. that's it. That. Well, after the goal, we were buoyed, weren't we? We started, as I say, looking a wee bit more ourselves. And surprisingly, listen, we'll go and mention it, it wasn't really happening for those wingers, was it? Because it was... Johnson again taking the game with the scruff of the neck and he again I think that something about um, Johnson recently I don't know what's happened he looks like a guy who's been working on his cross balls and his delivery hasn't he because he pings in another fantastic cross ball this time it's Yang and this one is a sitter he's centre of the ah, goal and he funny. fresh airs it and it hits his standing leg what's going Aye, on that's there? The, that's the one I was on about I just I don't know mate do you know what I mean? Your mum's scoring that, isn't she? Do you know what I mean? Like, it just hits a pure fresh air shot at it. It's a cracking ball. Um, yeah. And we're saying about the wingers being non-existent. I think you watch that one back, Kuhn drags a defender. So Johnson's kind of used the winger. Well, obviously the wingers went and the defenders went with, with Kuhn and Johnson's just swung the ball in. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, he's got to be finishing that, the wee man. I think anybody else, I think Dyson even finishes that, didn't he? Oh, that's bold, isn't it? I mean, it maybe hits mm. half him goes in. I don't know if he necessarily <laughs> bits it, but <laughs> it certainly probably goes in, aye. But it wasn't, <laughs> listen, we didn't have to go and wait too long, did we? Because eventually the goal comes. And it's Kyogo, and it's a carbon copy almost of the, the um, one that he, he, that he misses out on. And what I quite liked about the goal is he's actually involved in the play. As I say, that's when we started to find it. He's joining up the play, and he is involved. And once again, listen, it's it's Johnson on it. He just what picks him out. It's a what a ball out for the wing again. Excuse me, and it's straight in. But Kyogo, it's not just it's not just a case of him being in the right place in the end of delivery. The stuff we were talking about, the intelligence. He goes in, he splits the defender, and he comes round the back, blindsides the defender. Boom, straight in. He should have two of them. But listen, what a goal, eh? Oh, it's a cracking finish, and like you say. They... Pops on the back of the defender and absolutely some power on it. He's, he's, he's connected well with the wee man. And uh, yeah, that's what we've come to expect. And that's yeah. that is what he gives us. And that's that's the thing. It says, it's not asking a lot. And I'm actually still surprised that it's taken maybe a half. If it, maybe him, maybe the rest of the team to get a wee rock up their backside. But surely he's got to be thinking as I said earlier, and have a wee bit of sort of self-awareness to go, do you know what, see when I'm involved in the play, they're finding me, I'm getting the opportunities. You know, I'm not, again, I'm not comparing the two, but it's the kind of thing you'd see from a Henrik Larson. He knew the importance of getting involved in the build-ups, because if you're involved, your runs are going to be anticipated. There's no point of just standing around hoping somebody's going to hit you, is there? No, that's that, exactly. Maybe if we Kyogo's watching, he'll He'll take it on, take it on board. Do you know what I mean? Well, if we get ourselves on to TikTok, you might see CW. So, <laughs> any of you TikTokers out there, get it shared up and we'll tell them, yes, you know sir. what I mean? <laughs> we'll tell them. We know best, of course. You know what I mean? I, I, I've scored many goals at Celtic Park, me, so I know what it's all about. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, there's a good fun one. 
Steve-O, love it. He's sitting in a it's... Rangers boozer in Fort Aventura and they're still sick on the floor for yesterday. That's <laughs> it. There's, there's behind enemy lines there, getting in, incognito, I assume. <laughs> Aye, I hope so. I hope so. They won't walk it. <laughs> nah, no, all good. But listen, it's perfect. We're two 0 up. We're cruising. The crowd's up. The confetti's still blowing about the park. It's still madness. But what time is it? Seventy minutes. What does that mean, Paddy? Substitution. Substitution exactly. time, and it's a raft of changes, isn't it? Because we get off Awata, we get off Rio, we get off Yang. It should have been off a long time ago. <laughs> We've got off Kyogo, but actually, just before that, we have the introduction of Welsh as well, don't we? Yeah. Because We've got Narotsky um, taking one, and that's you know, as what it is. I thought in uh, his game so far, I thought, as you said, he, he looked very comfortable. If I was criticising, I would say that maybe he's a wee bit prone to the Sviachenko esque, you know, pushing a grab. Um, which is that? He, he, he's taking a tug on the back of the jersey, then he's, he's holding on to your man Olazania quite a lot. Um, aye. Aye, he's. But the changes come on and we get a four four changes. It's the big man. You wanted them to start, Sadamida. Cal McGregor comes in again, not fully fit, so maybe we're just getting some extra minutes and his legs at the optimum time. Bernardo, and of course, the guy we expected to start is Palma. So they're mm. on at 70 minutes, and, well, the chances, it's not long, is it, before there's some sort of impact. And guess who mm. provides the ball again? Let's say it together. Anthony Johnson, that's the man. He shucks it out on the wing and he fires it over and it's Palma at the back post. It's almost a an identical position to one of his European goals and puts the foot through it, but it's a good save. Is it a good save or is it a poor miss? I think it's straight at the keeper, to be honest. The keeper's kind of dived out to get himself in the paper, maybe. Um, but yeah, he's knocked it out and then the big ones there, as I say, they would be hovering about the six-yard box. That's it, his arms all in, and then instantly, almost straight thereafter, yep, 79 minutes, it's Adamida, he pops up, there's a chance again, you know, it's shrugs in, good shot, blasts over, again, Jink, is, that, is it the wrong choice, or is he is he just up for it after his goal at Ibrox? Or? I think uh, he's got a bit of belief about himself, hasn't he? The guy's, um, he's been scoring goals since coming off the bench, and uh, I, I think he's just... He's got confidence, and he's thought, "Yeah, I'll have a wee crack." Oh, well, two 0 you've got, you haven't? Just yet. swing back a bit, hasn't he? He's just he's kind of off balance and manages to put his foot through it a wee bit more. Yeah, <laughs> no. Nah. Well, eventually the change that well, certainly I was screaming for, um, Kuhn comes off at seventy nine. There's a guy that we thought perhaps when it came to the game at Ibrox was the call to come on, and it's Forrest. Yeah. You know, Forrest comes on. You know, we spoke about him. Rogers has spoke about him, said that he was um, you know, hoping that he contribute at the you know, the run in here and he gets a wee chance there. Do you think he does too much when he comes on? Is it you know he is very limited time, of course. He's about fifteen minutes all in. Is he, is, does he just do a job? I certainly feel that he gets a wee bit more involved than um Kuhn was anyway. His name was probably mentioned more than Kuhn's, let's be honest. In that uh, fifteen minutes that he played, he, he comes looking for the ball more. He tracks back more. Um, and in fact, he tracked back for one of the St. Man chances, wasn't it? And he, yeah. he's uh, intercepted the ball, got his back up the park, and yeah, he runs about. He gives you hundred and ten percent, as you always get for James. He's one of the players that you can rely on, and yeah. that. Well, it's, you know, the thing is, it's it's about having these options, and we see them coming off the bench. And there's a good bit of strength coming off the bench once again, and we've spoke about it, and we say it again. Mm -hmm. Impact subs, it happens again, doesn't it? Because eight six minutes, well, it's three nil, and Mida. it's your man Adamida. But it's all a good three of those substitutions that are involved. It's Palmer originally. He's got the ball and he cuts back. Celtic are a nice four on one. This is where we come into mm -hmm. our own, isn't it? We catch them and that intensity. You know, we often say we're going to play our game. Can you deal with it? Palmer cuts it back into Bernardo. He gets the shot off and it's saved and well for a nice close range. It's Ida just there in knock in the net. Three nil. Job done. Yeah. Get the proverbial body bags out. Three points in the bag. All happy going, eh? That's it. And the big man, he's a old school striker when it comes to stuff like that. He's always uh, standing waiting in the six yard box, ready to pounce. as um, soon as that ball comes loose for the keeper, he's on it in a flash. Um and that's I don't know, many's he scored now. 
coming off the bench, he's becoming a bit of a super sub, isn't he? I think, I think he's close to seven goals. You know, put me right in the spot there. I wish I did have that. I'm sure there'll be somebody somewhere that'll correct me, but I think he's circa around about seven goals, Mark. And yeah. Yeah. the important thing about him is, is he's scoring goals that are contributing. Mm. You know, we saw it Motherwell. All right, I think the only time that we've had an unsavoury moment was the hub situation. You know, misses a penalty. Oh, yeah. It's fairly, yeah. it's, I'm, you know, hold my hands up, it's unforgivable, but he hasn't been deterred by it and he's kicking on. You know, as you say, he's classic striker. Do you quite like that about him? We spoke about the physical side of his game, but he's quite mobile and quite explosive with the pace, but he's got good anticipation. It's about being, sometimes it's just about being in the right place at the right time, is it not? Oh, that's it. I mean, You've, you've seen that good players are in the right position all the time. And um, the big man's like that. He's, he seems to be in the right place at the right time. And that doesn't just come by luck. Um, and he has, he's got a, he can shift for a big lad. He's got a, a decent turn of pace as well. Um, he's comfortable on the ball. He can hold people off. Uh, I, I, I'm impressed with him. I, I'd like to see you him. See, you see, touch on either then, because, you know, we're, we're pretty much we've almost wrapped up, we've essentially have wrapped up the game. We'll just touch on one or two wee things afterwards. But with regards to Adam Eder, where do you stand on him now? It's quite a funny situation to how things pan out. Mm-hmm. We were talking about looking at quality. And whenever his name popped up, I'll be completely honest with you, I was completely underwhelmed. Certainly the name that was getting linked with us was um, Sidney Van Hoydonk. Whether there was any great truth in that or not is a different story. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of people were getting concerned that Adam Eder was you know, third choice at a championship Norwich, and they were getting in the guy who we were supposedly interested in. Turns out, actually, Van Hoydonk is a senior, has confirmed that there was nothing in that and it was never going to happen. But anyway, in our perception, in our minds, is we're hearing online or you're reading in the paper, if you still read that garbage, um, that Van Hoydonk was the guy that we wanted. And we were supposedly getting the offcast, the guy that they didn't want, that wasn't good enough that they were getting in the guy that we supposedly wanted for. So I felt a wee bit underwhelmed. Yeah. But he's came up here, and I think he's he's, he's turned opinion, isn't it? Yeah. He's, yeah, he's come in, he's done a job, he's scoring goals. Um, that's what he's paid to do. For me, I, I remember it as well. We, we spoke about it at the time, and we're both like, what, who? Yeah, he's an Irish international, he knows what it means, stuff like that, but... I just thought this is another one. He's been brought in. He's Irish. He's the Irish contingent. That's it. He'll win the fans over out there and sell a couple of jerseys, the usual kind of stuff. Like a. It's almost on. embarrassing at times, isn't it? It's a wee bit painful yeah. numbers, but. Look at it and you're like, aye, right, here we go. Right, we've got Robbie Keane, we've got McCarthy, we've got this one. Aye, sell a couple of jerseys. But listen, the big man's come in. He's done a job, isn't he? He's. Yeah. He's scoring goals and I'm I'm screaming for him to start a game. And, and here's the thing. See when we look at him, what I want to put to you and see what you think. Rogers has come out and it was quite interesting because we spoke about that maybe divide between the boardroom, the um, you know, the the scouting setup and all that kind of thing. It was a wee bit disjointed. And again, just to paraphrase, when he spoke about the signing at Ida, he basically says words to effect of he was one that I was made aware of. I spoke to his agent and I was excited when I heard that he could get him in and he personally dealt with that. He then went on and says, uh, I've got, a, you know, I like to think I've got a good eye for a player and I see his quality and hopefully moving forward I can be trusted to be involved in that. So that's a bold thing that Rogers has come out and said. So he's obviously saw something in Adam Eda and he's brought him in and he's so far proven to be right. The funny thing's going to be, as he continues to perform well for us, and obviously as it would appear, as polar opposites would happen, it's not quite working out for Van Hoydonk. Are they maybe going to want to bring him back? Or if he's still third choice then, irrespective of scoring for you know, us in Scotland, does that maybe just increase the price now we're talking possibly minimum six million is that looking like money that Celtic should be spending or do you think it's just enjoy it whilst it's there move on six million see if, see if you're paying six million for the guy I reckon he's going to get us what, between 15 and 20 goals at least a season I'd take that mm. um, it gives us another option 
What do you think as well, though? See, at this moment in time, we heard his press conference and he was saying about he was happy, he was surprised at the standard, they liked it. He was kind of, he was a wee bit on the fence, but he was relatively positive about his experience of Scottish football. One thing about him is he seems, he seems almost happy, dare I say it, to be sitting on the bench knowing that he's um, number two and coming on and providing off the bench. But at what point, particularly if he was to sign or wanting to sign, do you think he'd be looking for insurances? Do you think we can... I know I've, we've spoke about increasing the quality and Celtic should have guys that are maybe four, five, six million as options. So sometimes they are going to have to sit on the bench. But what I mean is, is do you think if we sign a guy for that kind of value, he's going to be happy to sit and fight for a position? Or is he expecting a, assurances, wanting straight in? I think he's going to be wanting assurances. Um you're not going to want to sign for some team and just sit on the bench all the time. No, he's stabbing anyway. You're going to want to contribute. You're going to want to be first choice. Can we guarantee him that he's going to be first choice? No, we can't. Mm-hmm. Um, can we guarantee him he's going to be a team player? Yes. You've been a team player, Adam. You're playing really well. You're making an impact. We're happy how things are going. If you're happy, here's the contract. And that's how, that's how I think it'll come across. I yeah. think... Uh, yeah, he's, he's an option that it's two totally different players. I mean, Kyogo, isn't it? Kyogo gives you the the agility, the movement, the, the pace through the middle, the kind of... It's just it's, it's two totally different players for me. Um, he does a strong one. You can go back to the, the route one, punt it over the top and let the big man bring it down and bring more people into play and stuff like that. So having two different players for me is, is, is cracking. Do you know what I mean? So I think the six million is a good... Mm-hmm. Well, I'll put a wee pause that you hear about that situation. It's quite clear, you know, as Steve says here, he says, if Rogers wants a player, then you give him that player, and if he wants rid, get rid. I think we've seen from Rogers that it looks as if he's weeding out guys. There's guys that are falling by the wayside, you know, we've spoken about what are the options, and mm. there's O completely out of sight, you know, yeah. is he a guy that, exactly, you know, get him on the side of a milk carton because uh, nobody knows where he is, <laughs> but, um, you know, it, we, we're going into the new season um, and obviously, hopefully, touch wood, that it's looking towards a Champions League. We really need that real quality of depth, you know, a standard of player. And certainly, at this moment, he that looks as if he could be it. Do mm. I believe that he could become a first choice, first number one striker? At this moment, for me, the jury's still out. I think he would be a perfect number two. I don't yeah. think he's a number three. But somebody put to me um, when I was talking about this situation the other day, and they actually, I don't know if you think about it or share this thought, they seem to think that Kyogo is someone that Rogers, being bold and being very astute and sort of, you know, solid in his conviction, that he would actually let him go. He says, "I think uh, he says, I think that he sees there's quality in Kyogo, undoubted quality, but there's also limitations to his game." What do you, I mean? What do you think of that? That's a, I thought that was a very bold and sort of out there sort of take on it. But do you think there's more? If we look at the sort of strikers that we've had, all right, let's forget Ollie Mark. That was a that was a <laughs> terrible idea. But if we look at particularly your Dembele, or we look at an Odson Edward. Yeah. To me, there seems to be slightly a wee bit more more on the Dembele side qualities in Ida in terms of the explosiveness, the power and the, the that natural finishing. Kyogo's maybe more of a, a technical player, mm. but do you think that's the kind of striker? I mean look at some of the strikers as well that he had when he was down um at Leicester. They weren't exactly Kyogo type strikers, were they? No, definitely not. And uh, we noticed that in Europe with Kyogo, he was getting kind of pushed off the ball too much. He didn't have the physicality to deal with these big European defenders. And I think that nullified quite a lot of our attacks in Europe. Um, yeah. A lot of the goals came for, for wingers and um, midfielders, didn't they? Really yeah. score goals for, for I mean, Kyogo had a better. He did. He got on score sheet. He had a better European mm-hmm. outing. But yeah, I do still think as well. Like stature doesn't always guarantee. But I, I think you're right. I think um, it, it all comes down to this notion of the intelligence, particularly with this current squad. I think as we talked about again, going back earlier about him getting having to get involved in the play when we didn't have the luxury of that he was sometimes albeit 
performing better than he had previously in Europe, sometimes a wee bit lost in the shuffle. So if we're going to keep Kogo, does that just mean we increase the quality elsewhere in the midfield for the supply? Is that what you would do and keep him around? Or would you be happy to you know, sacrifice him if the price was right? If the price is right, then you, you let them go. So let's face it, more. Well, Celtic Football Club is kind of what we do, isn't it? We get a player in, we, we play them to a certain extent, and then um, an offer will come in. And yeah, if we get a decent offer for the lad, then we'll let him go. Um, I'd like to bring in some wingers that can actually cross the ball and they're going to take the ball past um, a left back or a right back. Um, I'd like to see something like that. Obviously, defensive wise, we're needing to solidify there a bit, somebody to partner. Uh, Cameron and our keeper. Well, obviously, that's, that, that's, that's, that's the most obvious one. There's been some links flying about. We'll obviously get to that whenever that sort of becomes a wee bit more firm or a bit more serious. But no, I think across the board, I think in terms of the, the, the standard of the squad, there is some things to do. But yeah, certainly, as you say, I think with regards to Adam Eder, if the player is willing, if the um, price is right, as everything is, decent. Then, so it's for the yeah. yeah. And if you look at it, if we are to be successful this year and get into the league, there's a minimum uh, amount of cash value around about sixty million. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be a concern, should it, to be considering putting your six million out your pocket to to get somebody in, particularly if they're pre-established and they kind of know what it's all about. You think they'll just build on that at the next stage. So you know, he's a guy for me. I would definitely look at the mm. other guy, Bernardo. Is he for you? Is, is that if the price is low, right? Or would you be happy about that? Five million for somebody like him? Five million again. Has he done enough to prove the five million? He scored against them. That's two million on his price straight away, <laughs> isn't it? Um, he gets himself about. For me, he's a substitute, isn't he? He's going. To, he's not going to get into that midfield for me. If we're no. if we're keeping Matt O'Reilly, which I don't think we will, I think Matt will be away this time. We've got Rio in there. Callum will be back. You've got Tomoki Awata to go in there. A, a player going forward, do I see it being Bernardo? No, I don't. No, I don't either. I think he. I think he's been a, a contingency where they've kind of needed to. You know, we've been underwhelming with that that transfer window, and we mm. kind of needed, didn't we? We needed the wee tokens thing. Like here's another academy player for Benfica. Remember Jaw? Remember how that works out? You know, sh- here we go. But nah, it, it, you know, well, there's much to chew the fat over when it comes to that. But listen, let's finally wrap up that game. It, it fizzles out. It's three 0 and there's one thing, listen, we're not conspiracy theorists on Celtic World Order, but I think mm. we need to mention it. We spoke about the quality refereeing. We spoke about the um, stoppages. We spoke about the substitutions. Now, I found this quite interesting. I don't know if you did. Let's let's talk about that one, right? So we had 3-0 um, up cruising. We had a concussion injury. We had six maximum subs. Um, and St Mirren also made their full complement of subs. Yeah. Four minutes of added time. <laughs> Strange. Then if we we cast our mind back to Ibrox, um to each game in the balance, barely many stoppages, seven minutes. And then there was another game yesterday which we will touch on, and it was um Ross County three, Rangers two, seven minutes, didn't nearly turn down to nine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, very strange. What do you think of that? I don't know. I don't know where they put the numbers for. Um, what, what's the the allocated time that you're supposed to get per substitution? Is it thirty seconds or a minute or something? Like, say, I believe it. I believe it is between between anywhere between thirty seconds to a minute. Most people sort of generalise and say a minute per sub. But so you that's... look at the subs in our game, and they've got three minutes for that. I don't. I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? We had at least five, six minutes in that game. Um, and then, like you said, the game the other day there, they just pluck a number for the sky, don't they? But we'll, yeah. we'll give them seven minutes. Hopefully we can get uh, something in that time. Well, as we say, it's not to be paranoid because, listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We were winning. The game was taken care of. The points were in the bag. But it does slightly a wee bit galling, is it not? Because... All right, it's nip and tuck at the moment, and as we'll get on to, we find ourselves in a strong position. But we've always spoken about the importance of goal difference, and we were riding the crest of the wave. That's when we were starting to find our feet. We were looking really on it. You know, that three 
could have turned into four, and yeah. as we've seen sometimes as well, just that right uh, sort of version mm. of events, and it could be two goals in your stoppage time if it's five or six minutes. But yeah. no, it's and, and it's pretty much as well. It was the four minutes, and it was whistle bang on. So you know what it is, what it is. It's a minor gripe, but you know what. A good weekend because we we listen, we wouldn't be talking about this if we didn't have to if it wasn't important as I say at the start of the show. We're entitled, don't we? So there was a game that we discussed as well a wee bit at the yesterday up at Dingwall, Aros County, fighting for their lives at the bottom end of the table against the team that we were told were, you know, champions elect only a couple of weeks ago they were going to be quadruple winners and it's all rather changed. It's now going to be, what is it, two wins and eight? Um, you suspected that you were braver than I. You thought that they could give them a game. What, what, what do you make of that? It's strange how these things happen, isn't it? Uh, it's a funny old game, eh? Um, a wee trip to Dingwall, nobody likes it. It's a horrible drive up. Fans hate it. The trip on the way back is always good if you win, but can you imagine how their fans were feeling yesterday with a four-hour drive home? Yeah. It's not <laughs> going to be nice, is it? No. Uh, well, I thought Ross County played well. I really do. They went at it. They oh, scored the OG early on. Uh, a very peculiar OG. I wasn't quite sure what their goalkeeper was doing, but... Oh, uh, but a horrible, horrible goal to concede. Um then, yeah, they come out second half, don't they? All guns blazing and just bang, bang. Uh, put you know, them on the gosh. And the reason I want to talk about that game, obviously, as we say is there, you know, it's, it's a shock event in the Highlands. And mm. it does, the reason we talk about it is because it does pile the pressure on our rivals. It puts the pressure on the Rangers. It comes back to my favourite topic, the mental strength and the effect that results can have on players. Players that are historically scarred from poor results, particularly when it comes into the run-in. And this is very, very important for us. It is that shock result has put us firmly in place that no matter what happens on the Wednesday up in Dundee, Celtic will remain one point ahead and completely and utterly in control of our own destiny. You know, people say, obsessed with you watching your rivals for, well, I'll throw this back to you. See if you aren't keeping one eye on what you're up against, then you're not doing your job right, because you want to know, you want to eyeball, so that when we are talking about these things, we're looking and prove your preview in the next game, you know what you're up against. Exactly. You know what I mean? You've got to, if, you, if you're invested in your team, you're invested in the league, you need to be looking at the teams around you, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. And that's it. Watching them against Ross County just fills you with confidence about them coming to Parkhead, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. you you spoke about the running and their players having the mental capacity. I said it before, I'll say it again. Serial losers. What have these guys won? Your Tavs, your Goldsons, all these guys that if you see any Rangers podcasts or whatever have been kicking about, they're getting flung under the bus again. Yeah. These guys who were world beaters again, all oh, their back high tabs playing brilliant, scoring goals, goals and solidified the defence. Now they're again losers under the bus. Well, it, it was mean, quite. It, it was sorry, cut, cut, yeah, it was quite funny. But you know, we spoke about the game against Rangers, and we spoke about mm. how open they were and how easily they were penetrated in yeah. those channels and the opportunity. You know. Let's face it, Ross County aren't any great shakes, but they were getting massive purchase into that defence. They mm. were running them ragged. And as you rightly say, we've got a game around the corner in the next Glasgow derby, one that could really put this title to bed. Mm -hmm. You know, our crowd, our atmosphere, our pitch, you know, you can't help but feel confident getting into that now, can you, after what you've just saw? Oh, 100%. Um, I'd say that before, going to Ibrox, I was even confident of getting a, a result. Um, at our stadium, mate, I don't see them causing us any trouble whatsoever. I really yeah. don't. No, it's, it's you know, it's set up, it's set things up perfect for us. We'll keep one eye on Wednesday, of course. Irrelevant if they win, draw, or lose, certainly any drop points is going to do it. But we spoke about that game as well. They're going to go into it, they're going to be deflated yeah. off the back of a loss, you know, and there's also the added external pressures of what's going on there. It's all down to this mental strength thing. And I thought as well, what was quite interesting was we look at the manager, we talk about our manager, we talk about Brendan coming out. He's full of confidence. He's 
spoke about how we've been there, we've done it, and this is, in his words, this is when we kick into life, these you know, last remaining games. You know, it's almost polar opposites. You hear their manager talking about, um, you know, they could have played that game uh, before Celtic, but mm-hmm. instead they opted to... Um, Clear the path because we need you guys to be ready to go on and um, you know take on Celtic. And then, what do you think of that? See, just as a message, just uh, to your team, is an undercurrent, an undercurrent of almost distrust. But it's like, oh, you guys need a rest before you play Celtic. There's a good manager, a Rogers would say, we'll take care of indeed the night boys and see the weekend we'll smash Celtic as well. Yeah, it's a confidence thing, of course it is. Um, and I think as much as they've been playing well going into these games, I think he's he's been scared of it. Like he's wanted the players to rest up, thinking he'll go into the Celtic game with a, a fresh team and give us a run for our money. Which, yeah, do you know what? They did. They got a result out of it. Remember, they celebrated it. Yeah, that, that three each victory for Three each one that they got, the moral victory, shall we call it. Um, yeah. Was there anything moral about him yesterday when he stormed up the tunnel? No, no there wasn't. No. Do you know what I mean? The guys, he's at into their uh, deluded thoughts, shall we say. He's uh, he's becoming one of them, isn't he? You can see that. He, he, he's starting to believe his own tripe. Um, right. I think it's kind of coming back to kick them now. I think I, that... I think it's interesting when you look at the, the, the sort of contrast in this running. You've got two managers, you know, People say what they want about Rogers. They might say he's a Walter Mitty guy, spin a yarn. He's, you know, he's a bit arrogant and stuff. But what he is is he's confident in his ability. He's mm. confident in his management, his tactics, and he's confident in his players. And he'll sit there with a kind of coolness around him that just surely will exude and push on and instill real confidence in those guys that, you know, you have done it, you have been here, we're the champions, this is why we're the champions and kick on. The polar opposite, you've got another guy who now is starting to find excuses, he's gibbering, there's all this talk about, you know, the, the ketchup bottle and other stuff, like, I am not a mathematician. You know, maybe I'm wrong on this one, mate, but the numbers and the figures kind of are quite important here, you might want to focus on that. So, yeah, I, I think... You know, we might start to see fractures and cracks in them. Mm. And we, you know, again, we've got to take care of business before we play them. Let's get one game ahead, one game at a time and not get ahead of ourselves. But I've got full confidence if we can take care of whatever fixture comes before we play them, that it'll just be back down to business and we will do what we have done for the past, well, the vast majority of the seasons bar that freak season, which is kick on into overdrive when it matters, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And you spoke about Brendan there being kind of arrogant, and whatever else. He comes across sometimes as a bit an egotistical maniac. He's very he believes in himself, then he? he believes so much in what he's doing. And you need to if you're going to be good at anything in your life, you're going to need to believe in it. And you can tell that he does. He really, really believes that that he's got it. He he is the the best manager about. And do you know what? That's why we brought him back. Because he is one of the managers. And you look at the other side, the managers that they've been through, and yeah, it gets to this stage, and like you said, the excuses start coming out, the ketchup bottle, the caravan, and all this kind of stuff, do you know? Uh, uh, no, it's, it's, it's all the exact same. It's night and, it is night and day, and as I say, I think it's almost coming full circle. We saw some of the, we saw the great start to the season, everybody was back in the Brendan bus, we were all invested, Results yeah. turned. I think that was maybe a wee bit of him where I missed it when he was talking about quality. It maybe yeah. eroded some of the confidence he had instilled in average players in some cases. But he seems to have picked them back up and he's kicking on. And as I say, it's that air of calmness. It can be misconstrued as cockiness or overconfidence or ego. It's just a manager who's very comfortable in his own skin and yeah. very comfortable with his own game plan. And hey, do you know what? I think the Sapans are beginning to turn. The belief's coming back that, Mm -hmm. you know, Brendan is the right guy. And I think Touchwood, as we say, will kick on. And I'm confident now that we will go on and win this league. But irrespective of what happens, whether it does go that way or it didn't go that way, for the way he's talking, I've got full confidence that he will be here during the summer now. What about yourself? Yeah, 100%. When he come in, he said he was going to be here for three years, whether fans liked it or not, basically. 
And that was where the kind of whole ego thing came in. It was like, right, wait a minute, pal, you're just in the door. We brought you back. Yeah, whatever. We'll give you a chance. We'll let's see what happens. And uh, the whole kind of transfer thing as well, like when the players started to get their heads down, he's saying we need to bring in more quality. We need to do this. And you know, we need quality players in the squad and stuff. And that to me, I was like, if you're playing in that squad, you're going, well, wait a minute, what are we? Yeah, and that was at that time we were kind of struggling a wee bit, and fans did. We started to kind of question him. We were going, "Is he the right man for this? Is his ego too big again? Is he come back and went? Well, you brought me back in to do the job, but do you know what? We were right in doing it. I feel we were. Um, whether we go on to win this league or not, which I, again I'm confident we will. I'm convinced that we have got the right man in to yeah. do the job. We just need to believe more in. Right, which spoke earlier, his signings give him more. I say, if he wants somebody in, get them in. Yeah, Steve will say there earlier on the comments if Re- Rogers Brendan wants a guy, you've got yeah. to trust that process, you've got to allow him to do it, you've got to allow him to find his own groove. And mm-hmm. I think that's what's been happening. Yeah, it's been turbulent this season so far, but we've started to see the best in Rogers when yes. it matters. And funnily enough, that coincided with him getting attacked, if you will, in terms of some uncertainty for the fans and then the wee Ferrari, the wee sort of argument with the SFA when he was calling it the refs. But when everybody turns on Brendan, he manages to keep a smile on and power through. And do you know what? That'll do for me. Well, okay. anyway, Paddy, it's the end of another show, my friend. As always, thanks again. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's, uh, it's been a good... A good start to the week, isn't it? Hopefully we get to Wednesday and we're moving on to the next show. We'll have more to talk about, but it does not matter, does it? Because we're going to be top of the league looking down the Rangers, no matter what happens. That's a good feeling, is it, no? Of course it is. Like I said, mate, second place in Glasgow's first loser. That's it. And after everybody else, for those that have been watching us live, I know it's a bit of an early one, so thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching retrospectively elsewhere at a later date, then again, thanks for spending the time to come and listen to us guys in Celtic World Order. Before we leave, I say it once, I say it twice, I'll continue to say it. Remember, at this moment in time, Celtic World Order, our operation is small. Let's get that rapid expansion. Let's get the word out there. So if you like it, Subscribe to the channel, you get notified every time we go live. If you like what we're doing, give it a wee thumbs up. And if you want to help extend the reach, fire it out and share it. You can also check us out, x at cwo pod1888. Our personal handles are there. And we're on old school Facebook if you want to search for us. It's exciting times for Celtic and it'll be exciting times for CWO as we've got another wee exciting announcement regarding our team coming up soon. Celtic World Order has grown join the revolution as I like to say remember Celtic and football without fans is nothing but podcasts without listeners and viewers well as I always say they're redundant thanks again everybody take care of yourself and we'll catch up through the week see you later